Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber. I'm so excited to welcome you back to another episode. As you all know, Sour Loss Sweet Lessons is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. So let's dive directly in today's episode, which is called Dodging the Devil's Curveballs. Ooh, y'all, we talking about the devil. Ooh, ooh, creepy, creepy. Um, it's, I wouldn't even say it's a figure of speech because in a way, you know, I, I, I don't talk as much about faith and stuff like that on this podcast, but it's definitely a goal of mine uh, every now and then to be able to tap in on my faith. I am someone that is very spiritual, probably more spiritual than I am religious, but <clears throat> I am so guided by my faith and my trust in God and my trust in a higher power that I have so many examples of moments in which I know that God is real and I know that God is in control of things and is guiding me through certain situations. You ever have something happen to you where if you had done something differently, it could have ended up tragically? Uh, when that happens to me and it happens often, I always say, man, God really had his hands on me <laughs> because I, I genuinely believe that I'm not only surrounded by him, but I'm surrounded by guardian angels like my mother and my grandmothers and on both my dad and my mother's side. And I believe that there are moments that can only be explained through some sort of like supernatural discussion, something that is beyond human comprehension. There are moments that I know that a higher power is working in my favor. They always say the, the saying, all things are working for your good. I believe in that. And sometimes when you're in the middle of a storm, it's very hard to see that even in this storm, that those clouds are going to clear and the rain is gonna subside. And what is waiting after that storm is a rainbow and a beautiful blue sky that is cloudless. And the sun's going to come out and you're going to realize that what happened in that storm, you needed it. You needed that breakdown. As we say before the breakthrough, there is an episode, a few, probably from maybe mid last year where it's called the breakdown before the breakthrough. And it's a little bit similar to this episode, but this episode has more to do with how to remain faith filled during the times in which you are experiencing a storm. The moments in which we know that success is on the horizon, I feel like the devil purposely tries to throw curveballs at us to prevent us from getting to our destiny. They always say, and I always say they always say, but it is truth that there are so many sayings out there that the devil is quicker to attack you when you are on the success, the horizon of success. And boy, is that true. <laughs> and I have so many examples of that, but I, I want to start off by saying for anyone that's going through a storm or anyone that's going through a rough patch, just know that there are storms that are meant to clear a path for us. And without the storm, we are not given the lessons that are necessary. We are not building our tenacity and our resilience that nothing worth having comes easy. And sometimes we have a test or two that is necessary before we're able to move on to the next stage. We need that test, we need that exam, and we need to pass it before we can move forward. And in times it feels like life is targeting us and it's attacking us. And in truth, I always say, man, the devil is after me today because I feel like I am 
being attacked and I'm being tested and I'm being thrown curveballs and I'm being thrown moments in which if I don't make it through this period and I choose the wrong direction, I will have changed the trajectory of my life. I'll give you an example, one that goes way back <laughs> that I believe that the devil was trying to stand between me and my destiny. During my time in which I used to work at Target, we all know the Target story of how it is that I became Miss USA, but just somewhat of a, a rec, a, a, let's, let's reintroduce you to that story a bit. During my sophomore year at college, I was home for the summer and I had been working at Target for years during the summers. And <clears throat> a pageant recruiter walked up to me and she told me how she saw something in me and how I think, how she thinks that I should compete for pageants and all these things. And of course, I listened to her. I met up with her at Starbucks the very next day. She brought a foot tall stack of pageant books, convinced me to enter my very first pageant, which was Miss Virginia USA. I lost for six, seven, six years straight and won on the seventh try. One Miss DC USA. I did Virginia four times, either four or five times, then I did DC twice and won on the second try. So anyway, it was a collective of a seven year period. What I don't ever mention in that story is right after, I kid you not, right after I have this conversation with this pageant recruiter and I agree to meet her at Starbucks the very next day, one of the Target employees walks up to me and say, hey, what was that about? And she says, and I told her, you know, oh, this girl, this lady thinks I should enter into pageants, blah, blah, blah. And the lady proceeds to tell me, I don't think you should meet up with her tomorrow. And I'm thinking to myself, why, why not? She's like, sometimes people are trying to set you up for things. Sometimes people are, you know, have ulterior motives. And although she was correct in her analysis that sometimes that is the case, sometimes you gotta be careful of people. My intuition, something within my gut was telling me allow your curiosity to form and just go and see. I believe that that was God in my spirit telling me to ignore this lady and to meet this woman at Starbucks tomorrow. And if it had not been for me meeting with this lady at Starbucks, I would have never stepped into pageantry and I would have never been Miss USA, which means I would have never stepped into motivational speaking, which means, and it's a ripple effect of things that would have never happened because mind you, I met my husband <laughs> at my Miss Kansas USA's wedding, right? And I was roommates with her at Miss USA. She was one of my bridesmaids eventually, and she's one of my best friends. If I would have never competed at Miss USA, I would have never met her, which means I would have never met my husband. It means that I would have never attempted pageantry, which means I would have never become Miss USA, which would have never moved me into becoming a successful motivational speaker, which I would not have discovered had it not been for pageantry. I would have never met half of my friends that I'm friends with now. My, I would not be living in St. Louis. There's so many things that would not have happened if I had listened to the Target employee in Target telling me, do not meet this lady tomorrow at Starbucks. All for me to find out that this lady changed my life through a single conversation. So while I think it's important to remain vigilant, I think it's also important to remain open-minded because you never know when a conversation, a situation, an opportunity opens for you, an opportunity that you are destined for, a door that you're meant to walk through, you never know. So just be curious, do your research, and again, be vigilant. I was, I was walking into Starbucks that next day with pepper spray in case this lady tries something weird, tries to bring me into her car, kidnap me. I don't know. 
I, I was vigilant, but I also felt in my spirit and in my gut and my intuition was telling me, just see. But I have to ask myself, did the devil know something that day and try to plant this person to stop me? Because that's kind of what it's giving. It's kind of giving that I was on the verge of something great. And because I'm on the verge of something great, something demonic tried to stop that from coming to fruition, tried to stop me in my tracks because something great was on the horizon. So that's, that's one example, right? And I'll give you all another five or six examples <laughs> right after this break. See you in a sec. Welcome back from the break. Another example. The day I was competing for Miss DC USA was my age out year. I was 26. And I am at the nail salon. My car is parked literally the second row from the front door of the parking lot. The second row. I'm not in the back of the parking lot. I'm getting a pedicure. I have all of my pageant suitcases in the car. And as soon as I wrap up with this pedicure, I'm heading to the hotel because we have interviews that evening. So it's probably maybe 11 a.m. in the morning and interviews are at like five or six. I have to get my makeup done around three or four. I walk out of the nail salon after getting a pedicure my windows are busted out and all of my pageant suitcases are gone. Yes, all of my pageant suitcases, y'all. Right as I'm starting pageant weekend, things that cannot be replaced. The first thing that I do is I call my pageant coach, Jules, and I said, hey, my windows are busted out. My suitcases are gone. My laptop is gone. My iPad is gone. My makeup gone. Shoes gone. Everything. And the first thing that my coach says is, did they steal the dress? And I look into my back seat on the ground right behind. The, so the suitcases are gone, but on the ground is a garment bag. And in the garment bag is my evening gown, my interview outfit, and my swimsuit. And I say to my pageant coach, no jewels, they didn't steal the darn garment bag. So yes, I have my dress, my interview, and my swimsuit. And she says, well, that's all you need. And I said, ma'am, I'm done. I am going home because I was frustrated. Pageantry is so expensive. So I didn't have much money to replace any of the items that these people stole. I was an IT analyst at the time for the government um, and I made good money, but pageantry is still so expensive. Laptops are expensive, iPads are expensive. I was not a super wealthy person. So I was just thinking about how am I gonna pay to replace all of these things? And she says to me, I will figure everything else out. And boy, did she. She found me shoes. She found me some jewelry. She found, um, you know, really everything that I needed. All I needed were the main things, which was the swimsuit, the evening gown, and the interview suit. And what's funny is that when I got to my hotel room, I had spoke to my sister. My sister called my mom. And normally before pageant weekend, but specifically before interview, my mom and I would always say a prayer every time we'd say a prayer. And she calls me, of course, to say the prayer before my interview. And she says, see, this is how I know you're going to win. Because the devil is throwing curveballs at you. 
And I said, mom, I don't think I'm going to win. Cause mind you, I had been competing at this every single year for seven years. Your girl was tired, but I went into it thinking to myself, worth another shot. But she was convinced that I was going to win that, that this tragedy happening, there's some sort of meaning behind it. So then I get into the interview room. I kid you all not, this happened. I get into the interview room and I have the most beautiful blue romper on. And it was just stunning, perfectly fitting. It elongated my legs and I just loved it. It was one of my favorite interview looks of all time. The judges proceed to ask me a question that no one has ever asked me of any interview that I've done in the six years prior that I've been competing for pageants. The question was, when is the last time you've cried? And I smiled just like this. And I said, this morning. And they're like, oh, really? And I said, yep, this morning, someone robbed me. They bust the windows out of my car and took all of my pageant suitcases. But they didn't take this beautiful blue romper they didn't take my swimsuit and they didn't take the evening gown that I plan to wear at finals tomorrow. So because of that, I am grateful. I'm strong. I am resilient. And I am going to enjoy competing at this competition. And I'm excited to be here with such an amazing judging panel. And I'm not going to let some busted out windows and some stolen suitcases stop me from competing on this road to being the next Miss Washington, D.C., USA. And they were cheesing and happy and loving this answer. But if I had not had that burglary happen on my car, I don't know what I would have answered. I don't know when the last time I had cried prior to that. But it, it showed them that while she really is dedicated and she still showed up and looks as pristine as she looks. Again, I was this close to being done. I couldn't believe that my car windows were busted out. My best friend came to me. She taped up my windows and she stepped in because of course, if your window, if your windows are busted out, you can't just park it anywhere in Washington, DC. So she came, picked it up. She taped up my windows, drove it back to my apartment and said, we'll worry about that later. Let's focus on this weekend and get you this win. But something in my mind was telling me, be done, be done, end it, end it, don't go, don't go. And again, I think it's a devil's curveball where someone is trying, something is trying to stop me from reaching what is going to be a monumental moment in my life because I proceeded to win Miss Washington DC USA the next day. And six months after that, I proceeded to win Miss USA. What does that say? It says that you are going to be tested right before success is on the horizon and you have to stay the course. When you are on the verge of something great, the devil loves to throw a curveball at you. And it is your job to recognize that there is something demonic trying to stop me from doing this, which should be telling to you that this means that I'm exactly on the right path that I'm meant to be. Now, we can't confuse this with something that's not meant to be. When something's not meant to be, there are things trying to stop you at every single moment. And your intuition is not telling you to keep going. You're probably going to try to keep going because you're stubborn. But when you had a dream like I had a dream and a goal like I had a goal and something deep in me telling me to keep going, when something random happen, happens right before something beautiful is on the horizon, I know it's a devil's curveball. And it's my job to keep fighting through the disaster of what the devil has thrown me. And it's you all's job to do the same exact thing, 
to keep pushing regardless. Something similar happened to me right before I was destined to start my motivational speaking career. As you all know, if you go back to the, um, the signs I missed, the red flags I missed in my narcissistic ex, you can go through it and see that whole story. But we had gotten to a point in our relationship after Miss USA was over. If, you, if you've ever dated a narcissist, you know <clears throat> that they want to dim your light. They actually dread you being successful because they become jealous and insecure and it makes them question their own success. So you being bright and you having a light that shines very bright, they automatically feel intimidated by it. So their goal is to prevent you from conquering any mountain that's in front of you, from being successful, from really having a amazing career in whatever field you're in. They do everything that they can to prevent you from chasing your dreams. I knew as soon as Miss, Miss USA was over, I had like five or six non-paid speaking gigs lined up, but I was very excited about them nonetheless. And my ex would constantly push into me, oh, you know, why do you have to go? You have another speech, you have another speech, oh, another speech. And I'll always say, well, you can come with me you know, I know you want to spend this weekend with me, but I'm going to be out of town because I've got a speech. And he always made it an argument. <laughs> and in some ways, I believe that it was something demonic working within him, or it was just him being the worst ind individual possible that was preventing me from truly recognizing my own talents and from me chasing a dream that I deep deep in my soul knew was meant for me. And the moment we broke up, it was hurtful and it was sad and it was hard, but I felt a freedom that I can't describe because now I don't have this anchor chained to my ankle telling me not to go to this event, not to go to that event. I wanted to prevent an argument in this relationship. So there would be moments in which I would turn down speaking opportunities, only pro bono ones, but any speaking opportunity that maybe was a little too tight to the previous one, or, you know, he wants to spend this weekend with me. So I'm going to turn this down. I started turning down after five or six speeches. I started turning down speeches because I didn't feel like arguing with him. And I didn't feel like hearing his mouth. If I had continued down that road of turning down speech opportunities, I would not be sitting here as a successful motivational speaker. I wouldn't be because I would have totally allowed him to prevent me and shame me into not pursuing my dreams. Sometimes the curveballs are not necessarily placed in broken windows or flat tires. Sometimes they come in the form of a human being that you're in a relationship with, that you're friends with. It can come in the form of a parent that has their own narcissistic tendencies. It can come in the form of a human being telling you, don't do this. Stop doing this because something in them sees something great in you and their goal is to prevent you from reaching that greatness. So they shame you into making your dreams inconvenient for them or, or they shame they push you to believe that this is something you're not capable of achieving. They push doubt into you, telling you you're not good enough to do it, or I don't think you're meant to do this, or you're not talented enough to give a speech in front of 10,000 people, or you're never gonna be 
the next Lisa Nichols or you're not the next Gary V or Eric Thomas. They, they, they're going to say things to you to make you want to doubt yourself. So it's two things and it could be a few others. But the main thing that I experience is it's either an inconvenience for them or you can't do it even if you tried. Whichever form, the devil's curveballs can be a human being that you're choosing to be in a relationship with, that you're choosing to be in a friendship with, that you're choosing to allow around you to instill doubt into you. There are people, I believe, that are placed on this earth to stop you, to deter you, to prevent you. In previous episodes, we have talked about reproductive abuse. I know it's a random one, but I'm going to say it because I feel like it aligns with this topic. There are men specifically, and actually there are women, but mostly men do this, where they will purposely try to get you pregnant to slow you down because you are forced into motherhood. I have seen it. I have a friend of mine who is a boss, successful, doing all these great things. And she talks about how she believes that her ex purposely put a hole in a condom. She didn't know that the condom broke. She didn't know anything else. All she knew was a few months later, she was pregnant. And when she thought to herself that she might not want to keep the child or terminate the pregnancy, he manipulated her, spoke life into her, said, I'll be here. I'll be a great dad. Let's get married. Let's do this. She believed him. Once they had that kid, he was gone. He was gone. Nowhere to be found. No marriage and a terrible father. And now she is, has a child that she had no plans on keeping, no plans on being pregnant in the first place. But again, it's one of those moments where I wish she had listened to her intuition that was telling her that he's been a terrible partner all these years. What about a child is going to change that? And now she had to slow down her career because now she's a single mother. And now she can't do half of the things that she was able to do when she was prior to her being a mom. And it's very sad. Now, is life being brought into the world a beautiful thing? Absolutely. We also still have to recognize the fact that timing plays a lot into this. And this was not the time that she wanted to have a kid. And that is very much understandable. But he sabotaged their situation to purposely slow her down. Google reproductive ab abuse. Men do that all the time. But women do it too. They will purposely get pregnant, as they say, to trap a man. If I have his kid, he's a good guy. He'll always have to deal with me for the next 18 years. So the motives are different where one's about trapping and one's about slowing you down and preventing you from getting to success. Either way, it is manipulation at its peak. You have to listen to your gut and your intuition. What is it telling you? You have to listen to logic. What is logic telling you? Forget your heart. <laughs> Please forget your heart. If I could forget my heart years ago, oh my gosh, I wouldn't end up in half the situations I ended up in. You have to forget what your heart is saying. It is delusional and it does not provide the right guidance. Listen to logic and listen to your gut. While also staying the course when things get hard because the devil's curveball is real. I'll give you all one last example. 
As you all know, I was the president and CEO of a women veterans nonprofit, and it was one of the greatest positions I've ever worked. I'm actually open to jumping back into the nonprofit space, the philanthropic space, because I felt so much fulfillment from being in a space that's all about giving back to others. So while I love motivational speaking, I love content creation, I'm still thinking about either volunteering or taking a part-time or full-time position at a nonprofit, no matter how much it pays, um, just because I just really enjoyed giving back to individuals that are going through hard times. So anyway, I received an email at the beginning, excuse me, at the middle of November, right before Thanksgiving, for a CEO opening position for this job. And the first thing I did, cause I thought it was very interesting. I looked the organization up and I called my sister and I said, Hey, I just got this like email about a job opening for a president position at a women veterans nonprofit. What do you think? And she says, Oh, I think you would be great at that. You should definitely consider applying. And I got off the phone with her. And I said, you're right, let me go ahead and apply. And as the moment we get off the phone, I update my resume, I go through and do what I need to do to submit an application. And right before I hit send, my spirit is filled with doubt. I look at the job requirements and they want someone with five to 10 years worth of nonprofit executive level experience. They want someone that's a professional fundraiser that has at least five to 10 years worth of fundraising experience. They want someone that has an understanding of legislation and policy. They wanted all these things. And I was literally none of these things. <laughs> so I, I say to myself, you know what, let me not waste anybody's time. They probably are going to get dozens of if not hundreds of resumes and applications, I'm not even going to waste my time because I'm definitely not going to get this job. I don't have any of the experience that they require for the president and CEO of a position. This is not just a staff member. You're the president of this organization. I think it's myself, girl, who the heck do you think you are? Like you haven't been president of any organizations before, especially not nonprofits. So I don't hit send and I move on with my day. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a content creator, creator. I make plenty of money. I don't need the job. It is what it is. Three days goes by. Me and my sister are back on the phone talking and she's like, did you ever apply for that position? And I said, no, I just, I, I know I'm not going to get it. I know that I don't fit what they're looking for. It's just, it's a waste of time. And she says, I think you should still try anyway. And she's like, you're so good at literally everything. I think you should at least try. I know you don't have any of the experience that they're asking for, but I think you'd be really good at it. And I think it's worth a shot. And my crazy self listen to this girl. <laughs> and I go back to my email. I reopen the application and I hit submit. I get an email three days later. I have a phone interview. After the phone interview's over, four days later, they schedule an in-person interview. I drive up, because I was living in Petersburg, Virginia at the time, which is uh, Petersburg, Virginia, which is about 45 minutes south of Richmond. I drive up to DC, I crash with my dad, and I go in for the interview. I am surrounded by women that all look at least 20 years my senior, at the time, I was 27, 28, maybe. And I'm completely intimidated. I'm like, girl, I don't even know why I wasted my time driving up here. Like these, these women clearly are better than me. <laughs> clearly better than me. I interview. A few weeks later, I got the job. And I was shocked that they picked me. And then I start the position like January 4th or 5th. It was the first Monday of January. And I'm thinking to myself, oh girl, you're in over your head, but I'm committed, committed. And then COVID hits. All of my speaking engagements are canceled. Meaning 
the only source of income I have is this salary position for this president position. If I did not have it, I'd probably would have ended up on the street or having to live back with my parents because content creation and social media had gotten a little wackadoodle during 2022, uh, excuse me, during 2020 also, because I don't know, I feel like a lot of major corporations just didn't know where the world was going. So they didn't want to dish out any money via social media or partnerships until they figured out where the world was going. So social media also was not paying me. By the grace of God, I had this amazing salaried position and I killed it. I quadrupled our budget or our um, uh, revenue income. And I think I increased their, their income by maybe 400%. That's why I say quadrupled. I got a multiple six figure corporate partnerships. We ended up on Good Morning America. We had a custom eye cream that was made for our organization that was a limited edition from Olay that we sold online. Um, it sold out within a week. I mean, killed this position. But remember, when I went to hit submit the first time, doubt took over which I believe is a devil's curveball because I was on the verge of greatness in this moment, but something that was in me telling me, no girl, you don't qualify. No, you're not going to be able to do this. No, you don't have the experience. But by the grace of God, I have a sister that believes so heavily in me, which is why your tribe is so important because in moments in which you have doubt in yourself, you are surrounded by individuals that are able to pour into you and remind you of exactly who you are and exactly of what you're capable of. And that's what my sister did for me that day. And I ended up in this position for three and a half years and completely changed around this company and this organization. We launched an app. We launched an emergency hotline. We re rebranded, did an entirely new website. We partnered with Navy Federal Credit Union, Verizon, Procter & Gamble, Walmart, Olay. I mean, I transformed this organization and it reminded me, wow, Deshauna, you really are capable of anything. You really are capable of anything, but it is getting past the imposter syndrome only when you get past the imposter syndrome are you in a position in which you can really reach levels of success you never thought was possible. If we stop even settling for capabilities and settling for opportunities that we know, if we just challenge ourselves, there's the sky is the limit. So after this break, let's go over some lessons. I'll see you in a sec. Welcome back from the break. Okay, let's run through these lessons really quickly. Success often attracts challenges. Let's start there. The assumption that success is without hardship or success is without challenges or success is without hardship. You have a false understanding of success. Success comes with all of the challenges possible which is why only few people are able to reach certain levels of success because those are the ones that chose to persevere through their hardships. Accept that hardship comes with success and it'll be easier for you to stay the, stay the course on your road to success. Don't let doubt derail you. Like I said in that last story, if I had not worked through my doubt, I would not have ended up in that position. Recognize when you're being tested. That's one thing that I've had to learn myself is that tests come in the form of people in bad situations. And when I feel like, man, I'm, I'm on the road to something good. I'm really excited about this thing that's coming along and something terrible happens or someone says something to me or does something to me. I have to remind myself this is a test and I'm going to pass it. Doubt can be a sign of progress. 
I like this one because I think doubt is a reminder that we're doing something that makes us uncomfortable. And sometimes being in a state of discomfort forces you to recognize that you're doing something great. You're doing something amazing, but you're also doing something that's hard. And if it's hard and it's challenging, it means that you're stepping outside of your comfort zone to accomplish it. And therefore you deserve celebration and a pat on the back because you're doing something that most people won't do, which is challenging yourself to go after something that is not easy, that is not without hardship, that is not without struggle. And a lot of people have a tendency to avoid things that make them uncomfortable. I always say that your dreams are not in your comfort zone. Sometimes people, we become so complacent that we do things because it's comfortable. We do things because we know we can master it. We know that it's easy. We know it's not a problem. And that's where you go wrong. Some of the greatest levels of achievement we can reach must happen in the midst of being uncomfortable. So if you are experiencing doubt, it's because you're uncomfortable, which means you're challenging yourself, and that is a good thing. Win or lose, it's a good thing. And then finally, just believe in your destiny. Believe that you are destined for greatness. I believe that about myself. I, I, since I was young, really young, I have always thought to myself, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a Fortune 500 uh, CEO. I want to be this. I want to be that. I have always known that I wanted to be something great. Now, whether or not I became a lawyer, clearly I didn't. And I haven't become a Fortune 500 CEO yet, but we'll see. Um, but I have done so many great things in my life. And I'm glad that I've always believed that something amazing is on the horizon for me. I've never doubted that. And, and that's why people talk about the delusion necessary to become successful, that most successful people are actually very delusional and a little bit irrational. I feel like I have some of those characteristics where I look at things that most people would think are very unlikely of succeeding. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's unlikely that this is going to work out, but I'm going to do it anyway. And some things have happened and some things haven't, but the fact that I tried is what I'm appreciative of when it comes to who I am. I'm still going to try. It may not work out, but I tried, right? Some people look at the data, the statistics and the likelihood and, and the odds, and they're like, I'm not going to do it because it's unlikely. Whereas Deshauna, I do things because they're unlikely. And I like beating odds. So thank you all so much for tuning into another episode of Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. Please hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And I challenge you all to send this to five people. Five people that would benefit from knowing about the devil's curveballs something that we all experience on a constant basis. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.